Hello guys, I'm your host, Michaela Philo, and welcome back to McKay's Mindspace. Today, I am answering questions that you guys sent in and asked me. These are my favorite type of episodes to do because I feel like we get to just talk about multiple different topics, it's a very diverse conversation and I feel like you guys get to know me a little bit more on like a personal level and it's just interesting to hear what you guys ask. Every time I do one of these, I get so surprised by the questions and it just kind of makes my mind start to go in multiple different directions and anyone who knows me knows that like I'm kind of thinking about multiple different things at once all the time. So even getting prepared for these episodes, like I read the questions a few times, think about what I'm gonna say, but really I don't prep anything. My mind is just flowing. I'm already thinking about a hundred different things right now. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it because you guys asked some good ones today. The first question that someone asked me is help on relationships slash finding the right guy. Sad face. For one, honored that you think I have an answer to this question because <laughs> my track record is not showing that right now. But I do have a lot of experience and I have been in a long-term relationship recently that I just got out of and I have now been single and newly back into the dating world, which has been very interesting. And I've learned a lot. So I'm gonna share my advice on that and what I look for when I'm trying to find the right guy and what I'm going to be looking for in future relationships. I think the biggest piece of advice I can give on relationships is not regretting anything or looking at anything super negatively, which is really hard. We're human, there's no way you can't be angry when you look back on things. But I've had to really teach myself that usually when bad things happen in relationships, it's a learning lesson and it's an opportunity to get out of something that could have long-term been worse. You have to let the bad things that happen to you kind of guide you into your next relationship. There's things that you can look at from your past relationships and think, oh, I don't want that anymore. I don't want someone that has that trait or that characteristic. There are things from that relationship that I miss and I want to continue, I want to find in someone else. And that's possible. You know, there could be a relationship that did not work out for you. And there could have still been qualities about that person that you liked that you want to find again. If you're realizing that you miss someone, really think about what you miss about them. What is that something that you miss? And that's something that you want to look for in future relationships. When it comes to looking for the right guy, you really want to find someone that can match your energy and match you whenever you are being your most authentic self and not taking things personal whenever they don't work out, which is kind of what I'm learning being back into the dating world is that I know exactly what I want and I try very hard to be my most authentic self, but it's very hard to be vulnerable over and over and over again if you know you don't wanna continue something with someone. Something that I definitely do know is that you wanna be your most authentic self all the time when dating and when looking for a relationship or the right guy because then once you get into a relationship with them, like a long-term serious one, you don't wanna to have to show all these new sides of you and turn into a completely different person. And that's something I've seen a lot in my relationship relationships and other people's relationships is that at the beginning of a relationship we try to woo the person and like be this amazing person and we want to show them how cool we are or how amazing we are and we want them to see we want to be exactly what they want us to be and then when it comes down to living together or becoming more serious you turn on who you really are and sometimes that doesn't always work out in your favor so I think that if you are your most authentic self, it's easier to look at any relationship and see why or why it did not work out because you were being true to yourself the entire time. And I think now that I'm back in the dating world, that's something I'm realizing is that as long as I stay myself and be my true authentic self and I am a good person and I'm not trying to impress anyone in a non-authentic way, then I'm not going to be butthurt if something doesn't work out or doesn't go the way I have planned. And I think that the most successful relationships that I've seen are because the people were being themselves and respecting themselves and they knew what they truly wanted and they found that and created that with that person. One of my friends told me this 
piece of advice and it has stuck with me ever since she said it. And she's got a great relationship. She's married, they're happy, healthy. So I, I listen to her when she tells me things. Um, I respect her opinion a lot. She told me, Michaela, when you are looking for a guy, you need to think about them as a Sims character. Like pick out exactly what you want in a guy and create your boyfriend or your future guy and then that's what you need to go look for. And like, that is just like the most realest shit ever. Like I think about all the traits I want and I'm like, that's what I wanna look for when I find a guy. And like, you shouldn't have to settle for anything. I don't think that anybody in the world is perfect, but I do think that everybody does have a soulmate and deserves true love. Look at me getting all sentimental and lovey-dovey when I am single AF right now. Second question, really switching gears here. What are your thoughts on Siete being bought out? So glad that someone asked me this question because I have really been looking into it this past week. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the post, I thought it was fake. I did not believe it. I was like, there's no way that this little family owned business sold their stuff to PepsiCo. For one, I am very happy for the family because it is a smaller, I know it's a small family business. They obviously worked really hard. They created something amazing and it went off crazy you know like everybody loves siete most nutritionists dietitians any health and wellness influencer out there pretty much uses siete brand um, it's always you know they did a really great job with their branding and marketing and they're in whole foods they're in sprouts they're in fresh time you know they're an amazing brand super clean ingredients amazing products i've used siete products every single week so i'm very happy for them that obviously they got a deal that's going to change their lives in a drastic way and improve their lives in such a drastic way you know it's truly like the american dream that they created although where my disappointment comes in is that now that pepsico owns siete they do have the option to change the quality of the products. No one knows for sure if that's even gonna happen yet. It's just been something that we've seen in the past happen with multiple other products and that's what's disappointing is companies like PepsiCo usually will change products to lower quality ingredients because they're cheaper. And that means maybe instead of using avocado oil, they could use seed oils, they could use canola oil. Um, instead of using organic ingredients, they could just use uh, regular ingredients. And you know, the whole reason we all love Siete so much could could possibly change. Although there's another flip side of it that could be positive that now with this increase in money and this larger company, there is more of an opportunity for these products to be branched out into more stores and more locations, giving it access to more consumers, which is in hopes, you know, what happens that they don't change the products. So, you know, right now I'm kind of just wishful thinking. I'm, again, I'm happy for the family, but really just praying and hoping that the quality of the products stays the same. I'm a huge Siete fan and my only a piece of advice is go to Whole Foods right now and buy all the Siete products that you can while everything's on sale and stock the fuck up because that's what I'm doing. All right, next question. What are some of your favorite health wellness activities to do during the colder months? So I love this question because um, Really starting this week, it's starting to get a little bit colder. It's been kind of turning to fall, but the sun has still been out. We've still been able to go outside and go on walks and be out in the sun. So I will say my routine, my workout routine and my consistency stays the same. When it comes to nutrition and food, the only thing that really changes is the produce that I'm buying. I try to buy produce that's in season. So in summer, we had a lot of like, you know, watermelon, papaya, mango, strawberries, a lot of like citrusy fruits. And now that it's turning fall, you'll probably notice when you go to the grocery store, there's a lot more like sweet potatoes, pumpkin, spaghetti squash, tomatoes, apples, pears, um, produce like that. That's out right now. So I'm kind of just switching uh, my recipes and meals around more to fall produce products. I'm a little bit more like warmer, heartier foods, but everything is still whole foods, all organic, clean ingredients. I'm still making my plates half veggie or fruits, one fourth protein, one fourth carbohydrates, cooking with healthy fats. Nothing about that changes. Um, probably incorporating a little bit more hot tea more maybe some more hot bone broth, things like that when it comes to nutrition. Um, as for like supplementation, 
really just focusing on keeping a strong immune system since it's getting colder. This is kind of when everyone starts to get sick. So incorporating more things like bone broth, lemon, honey, tea, making sure I'm getting in my antioxidants, which is vitamin A, C, and E, getting in my zinc, making sure I'm getting a multivitamin every single day. Um, I do that through my CMOS. And as for like physical activity and things like that throughout the quarter months, I do most of my workouts inside. So I do Legree, which is inside. I do cycling, which is inside. And I actually just recently bought a Peloton at the beginning of the summer. And I did it because I, I was kind of trying to think ahead for this winter and I was thinking like, you know, like whenever it snows, if I like can't leave my house, and I can't go on walks or anything because I'm so used to going outside right now. Um, I'll at least have my Peloton at my house. So I have no excuse to not do any cardio or workout. If you do not have you know, a Peloton or an at-home gym, something that I did a lot the past few years is YouTube workout videos. So I'm kind of giving examples if it's, you know, it's snowing outside and you can't leave your house and that kind of won't be more till like December, January. But I had Amazon just like some lightweight, some workout bands and I went on YouTube and I would do like an hour long mat Pilates. I bought like a, like a space heater and I put my space heater right in front of my yoga mat so it would kind of get like warm. So it'd be like a warm Pilates workout. And I would do it in my basement for an hour and I would put the music on the speakers and it was a great workout. So as for my workouts, really nothing is changing that much besides not going on walks or hikes anymore, which I do do like probably two or three times a week. I know that if you are in like Cleveland, Ohio, that East Sporta has a big walking path on like the very top floor. I would do that a lot. Um, something else that I like to incorporate into the winter months is a lot more hot yoga. I do like to get into the sauna a lot more. If you live in Ohio, like pretty much anywhere that you can find a sauna or a steam room is really good, but I do incorporate more hot yoga. I would say at least once a week, once it starts to get colder. And that's again, um, just for the heat, it genuinely just feels good. And two, keeping the immune system really strong. I think when it comes to winter, it's a little bit more important to schedule your workouts ahead of time. I think in summer, I always know I have the option to go outside and go on a walk or go on a run that I don't have to plan as much, but pretty much around this time, once I know it's cold and I know I can check the weather at the beginning of the week, I try to schedule all my classes inside. Or if you like to go to the gym, just like planning out the times that you know that you can go to the gym three or four times that week. Next question, what are your night out recovery methods? Love this question. Now that I'm back in my single girl era, I definitely have had a few more nights out than normal. So I do have a few tips for this. So two things. First is prepping for your night out. Usually if I do go out, it is only like one big night a week. Usually that's Friday or Saturday. I know that I'm gonna have like a long night out, maybe no like agenda of what time I'm gonna get home or what time I'm gonna wake up, but I definitely prep up for it. The day before going out or knowing I'm gonna drink, even if it's just dinner and a few drinks, I mean, I know as I get older, after pretty much like two or three drinks, like I'm not gonna feel the best the next day because I just get hung over and my body just doesn't love a whole lot of alcohol. So I love to drink a lot of water the day before drinking. I make sure I get a workout in, always no excuse because if I'm gonna be hung over the next day, I wanna be able to rest and recover. And I'm even if I am going to work out, I just know I'm not gonna work out as good as I would if I was not hung over. As for the next day after a night out, I think it's really important to just rest. I don't think there's anything wrong with having, you know, one rest day a week. So I normally let my planned rest day be the day after I maybe know I'm going to have a night out because that's when it's the most beneficial for me. Anytime after a night out, I do try to sleep in. If I don't get eight hours of sleep, I definitely am planning in a nap because rest is so important and you need to rest and recover after anything that you do. You need eight hours of sleep after anything. I always make sure that I have my electrolyte packets so I can, you know, hydrate up double, triple more than I normally would. I always get right back on track with my routine. So even after a night out, I'm taking my supplements in the morning. I'm still gonna eat whole foods all day. I'm still gonna eat organic foods all day. I'm still gonna make sure that I'm hitting all my nutrition and dietary standards. Still make sure that I'm getting in my proper nutrients. And I think that that's the biggest thing. I don't put too much on my plate the day after drinking. Um, I try to 
sleep in and I have a nice slow morning. I feel like whenever you have a night out and then you just like go crazy doing all these things, that's how your like hangover starts to creep in. I feel like when I go balls to the wall after a night out, the next day trying to do a bunch of stuff, I just can feel my head starting to pound. If I take it easy, move slow, my body seems to recover much faster and better. So I make sure that I have a really yummy meal, I move my body, and I get right back on track and I go to bed early the next day. That way I can feel super good on that Monday or Tuesday or whatever day it is after drinking. So I think just my biggest tip is hydration, rest, and doing what you have to do to get, oh, hello, doing what you have to do to get back on track. Miso is really wanting to cuddle or something right now. Come here, come here. If you're watching this right now, you could see she's just keeps coming up to my face. It's like she wants a kiss or a cuddle or something. Next question, tips on staying disciplined. So it's kind of funny. I feel like every episode I get into how important it is to stay disciplined. And my number one tip for staying disciplined is just wait to see the results. With consistency, you're gonna see results. You will never see results without consistency and that requires being very disciplined and that requires being very motivated. I think once you experience and see and feel what it's like to feel better and look better and be healthier, you get very addicted to it and you crave it. And for me, that's all that matters. I'm very motivated by discipline. I'm very motivated by routine and becoming a better per person every day. So I feel like I am in charge of myself. I am in charge of my routine every day and there's no one else I can point fingers at or blame if I don't hold myself accountable every week knowing my goals. So that's how I stay very disciplined because I'm very organized. I'm always thinking one step ahead. I plan my week out usually no later than like by Saturday, Sunday for the next week. Like starting Monday, I'm getting after. I'm not really planning on Monday. Like Saturday and Sunday, I'm already, I've, you know, I write everything out on my calendar for the next week. I try to know when I'm working, know when I'm going to work out. And by Monday, you know, we're, we're being active. If you struggle with being motivated and being disciplined, I think the best thing to do is really sit down and write out what your goals are. And I would just write out like your top three and figure out how you can make a plan to reach those goals. What are the distractions? What's getting in the way? Where do you need to set boundaries at? What changes need to be made? Is it, you know, healthier food? Then maybe go in your kitchen and let's pull out all the things that are not organic, whole foods, clean ingredients, and how can we, you know, like gradually swap these out? But if it's exercising, how can we incorporate two days of working out a week rather than zero? And then in two or three weeks, how can we incorporate three or four days of working out rather than two days? And it just keeps escalating from there. Something that I like to think about is that it takes 21 days to build a habit and 90 days to build a lifestyle. So when you're gradually trying to have a healthier lifestyle, just adding one thing at a time every single week is the way to do it. You cannot change out your entire kitchen, all of the products in your home, your entire life overnight. It takes time, it takes education, it takes practice. But you do have to hold yourself accountable and you have to be very self-aware with yourself. And that means saying no to things sometimes that we want to do. That means saying yes to things that we don't want to do sometimes. And that means staying organized, staying proactive, and making yourself your number one responsibility and your number one priority. Because we only have one life. So make it healthy. Your quality of life is so important. Your lifestyle impacts everything. It impacts who you are as a human. It impacts who you are mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It impacts the way that you are in your work and in your career. It impacts all of your relationships, all of your friendships. It impacts your relationship with yourself. You know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you want to be happy and you want to be proud of yourself. So remind yourself that the next time that you don't feel motivated and you are trying to be more disciplined. Last question. What are your favorite liquid spots? for food, cocktails, coffee, exercise, local shops. I just moved here. Well, welcome to Cleveland. We're happy to have you. I'm actually a little bit newer to Lakewood. I've lived in Cleveland for a while, but I've been in a few spots. I actually started off in Edgewater, and then I lived in Ohio City, and then I was in Avon, and now I'm in Lakewood, um, and I'm loving it. Lakewood is just so beautiful, and I think it is just so vibey. and has so much character. I'm a little bit more closer to Rocky River, 
And so I think that's why I like it more too, because when I was in Edgewater, I felt a little bit more downtown and I don't really love the downtown area. I like the more like suburban cozy feel. That's why I love Lakewood. For my favorite foods, I would say right now my favorite place is Cleveland Vegan. That's just like number one, my favorite place to eat in, in Lakewood. I also love um, Propaganda. For a coffee shop, they also have uh, really good food there as well too. It's more like healthy bites. There's I think only like five or six things on their menu, but it's all very good. Um, I also really love Root Cafe. That's another really good vibey spot. They have coffees, teas, and um, food. All three of those places have all vegan and gluten-free options, which is great. As for other restaurants that I love, um, I love Sarita. Sarita is one of my favorite like sit-down restaurants. They have an amazing cocktail and wine list and so many food options. It's just like insane. I think they have like 12 or 15 specials that are new every single day. That's a really good place. I love Blue Habanero for a Mexican restaurant. Um, as for a grocery store that I really love, Lucky's Market is very great. That is um, kind of similar to like a Whole Foods and Fresh Time. They have a really good healthy options, all organic, clean ingredients. All of my favorite brands are there. Amazing produce. As for favorite spots, um, Edgewater Park is a great place. This is a little bit outside of Cleveland, more towards the city, but that's an amazing park to go to. Um, the Metro Parks closer to Rocky River is a really great park. That is just huge, very long walking paths. As for workout places, I do my cycling in my Legree in Westlake, which is about 10, 15 minutes from Lakewood. Somewhere in like the Lakewood Rocky River area that I love is Sacred Hour for yoga. And I love doing the hot yoga there. If Ann Richards is ever doing a class, go to her. She is absolutely amazing. I promise you it'll be the best yoga class that you've ever done in your life. But yeah, there's a lot of hidden gems. I'm probably going to I'm probably going to finish this podcast and think of more places, but those are definitely my top ones that I visit the most frequently. And those are all the questions that I am answering from you guys today. Those questions were good. We really dove into multiple different topics and I loved it. So I'll definitely be doing more of those. And thank you so much for sending in questions if you did. I hope that you guys really enjoy these Q&A episodes and never be afraid to ask anything at all. I love when you guys ask topics in every area. I always say send in questions about, you know, relationships, personal things, mental health, nutrition, um, and hopefully I've got a piece of advice for you. I think that today is going to be a really good day, and hopefully my podcast contributed to your day and making it a better day for you, and maybe it motivated you a little bit. But it's already noon on a Monday, and I've done a lot. I taught classes at 6 and 7 a.m. this morning. So I've been up since 4.30. And then I went to the grocery store after that, got a few things. And then I went to Cycle Bar and it was 8.30 by then. My class was at 8.30. And then I came home, made some TikToks, showered, stretched, did my red light therapy mask. And here we are. And it's noon. And I still have more to do today. I have more classes I'm teaching this evening. I'm probably going to rest the rest of the day after that, but I'm loving recording in the middle of my classes while I'm just like super motivated and super, you know, wired in, locked in. I feel very locked in in life right now and I'm hoping it sticks. You know when you get those like random bursts of energy and motivation and you just like do a bunch of things? I've had that feeling for a few months now. Uh, that's a stretch. I've had that feeling for maybe like a good two months now, confidently. So I'm just hoping it sticks because I'm feeling good, guys, and I'm on a roll. So hopefully I have more good stuff for you coming up. I'm going to try to get these in weekly, if not every other week. It will never be longer than that. And thank you so much for supporting McKay's Mindspace, for tuning in and listening. If you have video on today, thank you for watching and hanging out with me. And please share McKay's Mindspace with a friend or a family member. It helps me out more than you know when you give a rating, when you like, when you follow. All of that really, really helps out and makes McKay's Mindspace possible. So I love you guys so much. I hope you have a beautiful, amazing day. And go take care of yourself. Bye, guys.